The coelacanth is often cited as a major discovery for cryptozoology, being an ancient animal thought to be extinct for millions of years before its rediscovery. But there are also reports of undiscovered species of coelacanths around the world. Could there be a new coelacanth species waiting to be discovered in the ocean's depths? Speaking of millions of years, if you ever find yourself in an apocalyptic future, the book, Ultimate Guide to Rebuilding Civilization, is a must-buy. It's an absolutely humongous collaboration between artists and writers designed to showcase the history of human inventions. Over 50 artists helped work on over 400 pages of material that show everything from fishing to engine building. The book contains step-by-step -step guides to help you recreate humanity's technological achievements. For fans of this channel, there are also some really cool speculative evolution animal drawings. I especially like this well-water creature. You can click the link in my description and use the code SCARIER10 to get 10% off of your purchase. Thank you to Hungrier Minds for sponsoring this video. Professor J.L.B. Smith is the man who first identified a modern coelacanth specimen. Due to his newfound fame, he would receive reports of coelacanths from other parts of the world. One of the most interesting came from an American soldier in Korea. He claimed that you were able to buy coelacanths in markets, and that they were actually fairly common. Another woman from Bermuda swore to him that a fisherman had offered one to her. These aren't the only places where the coelacanth was allegedly offered for sale. Hans Freak, a scientist who researched the coelacanth, was told of a Spanish sighting of the animal. According to this individual, they were offered for sale in the Palma de Mallorca markets of the Balearic Islands. The man said it was so well known there that he didn't even think to take a photograph. Vigo, Spain also had a coelacanth report, but after seeing a photograph, Freak thought it was an anglerfish. A Greek man also claimed to have caught a coelacanth 2 feet or 0.6 meters in length. Freak was also told of a coelacanth being seen in a Portuguese magazine. However, it wasn't known if that coelacanth came from Portugal or from Mozambique, which was a Portuguese colony and a more likely candidate. Australia has been home to not one but two coelacanth reports. The first came in 1949, when a coelacanth described as having paws and claws was supposedly caught. The second report was anonymously sent into the magazine Strange Phenomena in 1980. Interestingly, both of these reports came before it was known that coelacanths lived to the north of Indonesia. There is one other odd story. In 1939, some guy in Australia got a hold of some coelacanth scales. J.L.B. Smith had taken great precaution to prevent people from stealing scales from the South African specimen, so could they have come from an Australian one? In all likelihood, the scales were probably just from another South African specimen, or someone figured out how to steal them anyway. California was the location of a brief but strange report of a coelacanth being caught. It was allegedly shipped via Air Express, but lost in transport. Michael Raynell points out that shipping an animal of the coelacanth size would have been wildly expensive, so it probably wasn't one. But the article that mentions this report also mentions a report from Florida. According to that story, a four-legged fish was caught in Tallahassee back in 1949. For reference, the fins on the bottom of coelacanths are often called legs. Coelacanths are actually related to lungfish who can sometimes use their fins to help crawl on land. One of the most discussed pieces of evidence were silver coelacanth models supposedly made by the Spanish in the 17th century. It was theorized that they were either made by sailors who saw coelacanths in Africa, or by people who saw a coelacanth in the Gulf of Mexico. Hans Freak would have a couple of experts examine the coelacanths. Their analysis concluded that the models were actually made in the mid-1900s. One model looked as if it was based off of the first coelacanth found in 1938. 
You see, that Sheila Can's fins had been bent in an unnatural position, which is what the model looked like also. The other showed signs of having been manufactured in Spain in the 20th century, like a lack of elegant details older Spanish art had. But those weren't the only pieces of physical coelacanth evidence. Ichthyologist Isaac Ginsberg was sent a scale he said could belong to a coelacanth. It was sent to him by a souvenir maker in Florida. Unfortunately, it later went missing. Naturalist Sterling Lanier was at an art show in Florida when he saw a necklace with what appeared to be coelacanth scales on it. He tried to buy it, but the owner told him no. He drew a sketch at the time, but he later lost the sketch. Writer Graham O'Neill wrote that a coelacanth drawing had been found on the wall of a 17th century Mexican church. Michael Raynell was unable to locate the alleged photograph of this wall, supposedly published in the magazine Science in the 1990s. The strangest story was about a silver goblet supposedly showing a coelacanth on display at the Pittsburgh Natural History Museum. It was supposedly another 17th century Spanish artifact being shown next to a preserved coelacanth. Stephen Creedle said that he had seen it there after reading about the silver coelacanths. Of course, when cryptozoologists investigated the matter, the museum said they didn't have it. Raynal noted that he may have just misremembered which museum the goblet was at. Carl Schuker also briefly mentioned a coelacanth being discovered in nearby Jamaica, but not a lot of details were mentioned. It apparently made some newspapers, but no proof of the coelacanth was ever brought forth. Jerome Hamlin of Dinofish.com has mounted several expeditions to find coelacanths. One of the strangest brought him to Puerto Rico in 2002. There, he talked with an American former marine turned fisherman named Hector Western. Western told him that in 1974, he was on a boat when two coelacanth like fish were caught. Unfortunately for science, the fishermen didn't think the two would be edible, so they threw them overboard. Hamlin had also received an email about a coelacanth being spotted in the Solomon Islands. He didn't get a lot of details, he was just told of a village to ask around at. Sure enough, when Hamlin went there, people recognized his photo of the coelacanth and said it had been caught before. Another man near the island of Morovo said he had caught two small coelacanths back in 1978. Hamlin once heard that a coelacanth was spotted in Tahiti. He did go on an expedition there in 2013, but nobody he talked to recognized the coelacanth photo he brought with him. CryptoZoo News also talked about a report from the North Sea, but further details weren't mentioned. In 1972, scientist Burchard Brentjes thought he saw a coelacanth in an old drawing from India. It was an 18th century piece of art that showed a man standing on a coelacanth-like fish. The fish had two dorsal fins like a coelacanth does, and pectoral fins similar to a coelacanth's. Brent just thought that perhaps some Indian sailors had gone to Africa and seen one there. Others have proposed that the artist saw a new species of coelacanth near India. It's been reported a couple of times that Rapa Nui is home to a coelacanth by the name of Pataki. This comes from author Francis Mazier in his book Mysteries of Easter Island, where he writes about a coelacanth-like fish with legs. Paleontologist Tyler Greenfield investigated the matter and found that the Pataki was actually a name for the local fish, Chapman's Blenny. He even found a photo of a club carved to look like a pataki, and it's clearly not a coelacanth. Cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman studied under anthropologist Philip Dark, whose specialty was West African artifacts. Several of these objects contained an animal that Dark referred to as an unknown fish. Coleman cautiously identified these fish as possible coelacanths. He also noted that they were at least older than the rediscovery of the species. 
Some of the artifacts also show the mystery fish vertically, and coelacanths are known to drift vertically at times. There were other identities considered, like the African sharp-toothed catfish, but both Coleman and Dark didn't think it was one. Michael Raynell pointed out that the sculptures didn't have the three bottom fins of a coelacanth, but Coleman noted that the artist may have just left them off for artistic purposes. Perhaps they saw one in the ocean and didn't get a close look. I think that new species of coelacanth are the most plausible prehistoric survivor cryptids out there. The species is fairly evasive, and the newest coelacanth species was only found at the end of the 20th century. But if these reports aren't new species, what are they? One strange explanation is the anglerfish. At first, it doesn't seem like they would be a likely misidentification candidate, but Freak wrote about at least one case of an anglerfish being identified as a coelacanth. The Paws and Claws sighting of Australia was also thought to be an anglerfish, since the species on Tenarius striatus has lobes kind of like a coelacanth's. Some people might just not know what a coelacanth looks like, so when they see a strange rare fish, they just assume it's a coelacanth. I think this may explain some of the sightings JLB Smith received. Jerome Hamlin also acknowledges that some people could just be lying for attention or money. Primatologist Ron Pine had an interesting theory about the coelacanth scale sent to Isaac Ginsberg. He thought that after further examination, it was found to be nothing special after all, so the story was quietly forgotten about. I think this may be the explanation for a lot of seemingly lost cryptid specimens. David Goodsward pointed out that, at the time, the only coelacanth scale was on display in South Africa. So Ginsberg probably didn't know what a coelacanth scale looked like exactly. It also seems that he didn't really think it was a coelacanth, but he just said it was a possibility after the media asked him. Interestingly, Michael Raynell found that, for years prior to the Indonesian coelacanth being discovered, there were reports of the coelacanth in the same area. Maybe if someone looks into these other reports, another species will be found. In a hopeful letter to a coelacanth eyewitness, JLB Smith wrote this. During the past six months of 1953, among the enormous numbers of letters we have received from all over the world have been some giving information about strange fishes, which people consider may have been coelacanths. And indeed, some of them are most interesting. I should not be surprised if coelacanths are eventually discovered over a great area of the oceans. Big thank you to my Patreons Timothy, Wild World, Gerhard, Jason Cook, John R., and Mackendude. If you'd like to support my channel, a link to my Patreon will be below. Liking and subscribing would also be appreciated. I'd also like to thank Lauren Coleman, David Goodsward, Dinofish.com, Cameron McCormick, Brandon, Tyler Greenfield, Pondicherry, and Robin for helping out. That's all for this video. Keep an eye out for coelacanths in your local area, and I will see you in the next one.